Pro-Life Jen. This is a new episode of the Explicitly Pro-Life Podcast and the How to Win This Week series. Today I want to talk about post row America. You know, this is like literally my favorite topic to talk about. I, I mention it at every single podcast. Um, but we recently at Students for Life Action put together a map for the pro-life movement to understand where where we're going to have to work in a post row America. Something that I've become um, increasingly concerned about it, and that I don't think our movement is ready for um, is the fact that, you, you know, when when Roe is reversed, if so if this Dobbs decision reverses Roe, sends the decision of abortion back to states, the abortion lobby led by Planned Parenthood, you know, this government funded entity that gets, you know, over $600 million a year from us taxpayers every year, they're going to be moving and shifting money from, you know, influencing these national campaigns to state and local campaigns. So, you know, your local House of Delegates member, state senator, who's, you know, might have an opponents every two or four years, um, but maybe there's they're not very well-funded campaigns, are going to start seeing a lot of money being put against them. Why? Because the abortion lobby knows, as we will, that it's going to come down to the states. Until we pass a constitutional amendment to protect all life, which is ultimately our goal in the pro-life movement, I want to say that again because sometimes people don't know that's our goal, um, we will be working state by state to, to make abortion un- unavailable, um, as well as unthinkable. Um, and so we put together this map. You can go to Students for Life Action's Instagram or Facebook. Um, I think it's on Students for Life Action's blog, um, studentsforlifeaction.org or studentsforlife.org. It's on our blog as well. This map is really helpful. Memorize it. Um, the way we, we broke it down, it's pre-row law, uh, that would ban abortion, trigger law that would immediately take effect once Roe is reversed, uh, or an existing what's called a Life at Conception Act. And this is something that we've been working on at Students Life Action is going state by state to get these laws introduced, these Life at Conception Acts, which would ban all abortions in the state because, you know, we're all about protection at conception, not simply trying to ban abortion at 15 weeks. We obviously support any law that will save any life, uh, but that is not our end game. Um, and so this map is really interesting. So, you know, of course, you've got states like Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Arkansas, Missouri, South Dakota, North Dakota, Idaho, Utah, Kentucky, Tennessee that have some sort of trigger law already in effect, meaning that we believe when roads reverse, abortion will be outlawed in the states. You have states like Arizona, Oklahoma, Wisconsin, Michigan, West Virginia, Georgia, and Alabama that have a pre law pre-row ban uh, on abortion may or may not uh, ban abortion. It kind of depends on the courts and how the courts rule if a, if a pre-row law would still stand. We all know the abortion lobby is going to be doing everything possible to stop these laws. Um, the life at conception law has only, though, been passed in two states, Arkansas and Alabama. You all might remember in Alabama did this a few years ago. We were there. We lobbied um, the legislators and the, the governor, K. Ivey, came under a, a lot of pressure uh, to reverse course and they refused. Last year in Arkansas, you, you may not know this, we were um, uh, key players in, in getting a life at conception law passed in the state. And we were really honored to work with the Arkansas State Senator Jason Raper on this uh, pro-life champion. And the law actually was going to die. Um, and it was going to die because of pro-lifers um, who thought that, you know, we shouldn't be passing this bill at a time. We should focus on another uh, bill. Um, and it was because uh, you all and a lot of voters who Students for Life Action called and mailed and emailed and texted who started calling their legislators and then the governor uh, that got that bill signed into law, meaning that this is now a law uh, in the state. It hasn't banned abortion because immediately, obviously, the abortion industry stops those through legal injunctions. But when Roe is reversed, that law goes into effect. And that's really what I want to talk to you about today is, one, knowing where your state stands in a post-Roe world. You really need to go to take this map, save it in your phone so you know where your state stands. I mean, there are majority of states don't really have any. They have limited or no protection by law post row. I mean, and I'm going to name some like right-leaning states here, states where you would think there would be. Montana, Wyoming, Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa, um, Indiana, 
uh, South Carolina, Florida. We're going to come back to Florida. Um, these are states where you would assume there was some protection and there's not. So if you live in one of those states, you really need to be paying attention to this episode and get this map and get to your state house as soon as possible. Call Students for Life Action. We would be happy to uh, activate the pro-life generation in your state to get one of these Life at Conception Acts uh, passed and going in your state. Um, this is this is an important moment for us, and 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 this is kind of my next point I, I want to hit. Um, there has been a lot of talk in the news media about what type of laws we should be getting passed. You know, this legislative session before the Dobbs decision, um, should we just talk about fifteen week abortion bans, uh, which is what the Dobbs case is is about, the legality of a, a ban Mississippi passed to ban abortions at fifteen weeks, or should we, you know, continue doing what we've been doing and advocating for since the start of the pro-life movement, which is protection and conception. Um, as I said, I, I believe that, um, you know, we, we never torpedo pro-life laws. If a law is going to save a life, we want to support that law. Um, but unfortunately, some people don't feel the same. We actually saw in Florida, for example, a heartbeat law modeled off the, off the Texas law, which I've already done an episode on how it saved lives. and It's been revolutionary. Um, there was a heartbeat law that was introduced in Florida, which was actually torpedoed by pro-lifers in Tallahassee in place of a 15-week abortion ban, which has like exceptions so wide you can drive a, my RV through it. Um, and so it was really discouraging to see that because one, my question is, why can't you advance both? Like, who says you can only pass one pro-life law, a legislative session in your state house? No one. There's no law. It's just the politicians opposing this. We only will talk about this once type of thing. Who gives a shit? If a, you are electing the politicians and you tell them what you want them to do because they work for you. Never forget this. And by the way, just Students Life Action has this whole real life politics uh, training that we're going to be debuting. It's an eight hour full day school. Um, but it's real nature of politics. Uh, it's, it's modeled after, after our good friend, uh, uh, Mike Rothfeld and his work in Virginia. But uh, it, in something you have to realize is a politician's not, go- no matter how friendly they are, um, no matter how wonderful they may be, they're not going to do things that are hard unless they're pushed and shoved to do those things. They are going to do, you know, go down the, the path of least resistance that's going to still get them the endorsement uh, or, or, you know, the privilege to have a picture next to the pro-life leader in their state. You have to push them to do the hard things. This is, it's like this in a lot, of, a lot of ways in life, right? To do the hard things, you need to be shoved. Uh, and that is, that is what we need to be thinking about for these political leaders. And, and it, was, it was very discouraging um, to see what happened in Tallahassee. We've seen it happen in other states where we've attempted to get uh, life at conception laws introduced. And we were told, no, just wait, we're just going to go for this bill. Like, first of all, who says, why can't we do both? And I understand there's political realities where you may be able to get a 15 week ban passed, uh, but you may not have the votes for life conception. Um, that's, that's okay. We'll get those members uh, of the legislature on record voting against the life conception bill so we can educate their constituents, um, maybe prime Primary, some people that need to be primary who say they're pro-life are not very pro-life. It's a great way to get people on the record. Um, but it, but we should, as a movement, um, we shouldn't rush to the middle. And I think this is an important lesson uh, for us. I'm probably making some people mad with this podcast, but that's okay. That's kind of what I do, I guess, sometimes uh, with pro-abortion people. So why not pro-lifers? But we, we need to be careful not to rush to the middle here. Um, our movement has always been about protecting all children in the womb, no matter their age, no matter the circumstance of their conception, no matter their developmental status, no matter their gen- genetic code, that is who we are. This is a, a tremendous moment that we're living in right now. It's, 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 it's a moment that we've talked about for a long time, but a lot of us didn't actually think, um, I think that this was actually going to happen. And we as a movement, uh, do not negotiate or compromise our beliefs. Politicians can do that. That's what they do. They, they have to come up with compromises to get laws passed, to get, you know, a little bit of movement here. They have to give a little bit here. And, and that's the wheeling and dealing of, you know, the political world. And that's the wheeling and dealing of the political realm. And that's on their uh, moral conscience. 
But we as a pro-lifers, we shouldn't be rushing to the middle and say, okay, we understand, you know, passing a heartbeat bill that will ban, you know, 95% of all abortions or ba- passing a life conception act that can, will ban all abortions in post-Roe America. That would be really hard for a vote for you to take. Um, so let's just give you an easy bill to pass. Uh, that is, that is, I truly think, um, misguided thinking because we are leading a movement and we're running a movement um, and and movements don't uh, don't seek compromise to the goals um, I mean can you imagine just think about the civil rights movement um, I, I certainly can't recall civil rights uh, leaders um, you know advocating on a national scale for well let's desegregate you know schools but let's keep lunch counters uh, you know segregated or or our water fountains, those things that existed before COVID, uh, se- segregated. That is that is not. Now there were proposals, there were policies, there were things that were done in incremental steps, uh, which had to be done because of the political realities of who you're going to get to vote. Um, but the movement stays true to the goals of the movement and the mission of the movement. And that would be my uh, kind of encouragement to you today is when you start looking into, and you really should be paying attention to what's happening in your state house. What are the pro-life laws being introduced? Whether it's, you know, Students for Life Action uh, is working on peace legislation, human coalition action, um, you know, if it's a right to life affiliate or if it's a family policy council, what are the laws being introduced? Um, Are, you know, what's happening in the state house? Stay engaged. And remember, you know, there might be a specific law that you're excited about. There might be another strategy someone else is excited about. You don't have to torpedo each other's laws. Like that doesn't help um, because we're all in this to win it. We're all in this to save lives. Speaking of saving lives, I want to just give you a really quick breakdown. Students Life Action was everywhere this past week. We actually held four lobby days in two days. Um, Our team in New Hampshire, believe it or not, delivered nearly a thousand petitions for supporters across the state. New Hampshire, as you recall, defunded plan Parenthood, then the pro choice Republican governor um, begged the state to refund Planned Parenthood, threatened the legislators, and they still haven't done so. They're holding firm. That has been huge. In Iowa, we were able to deliver thousands of petitions uh, from from actual constituents on, uh, to key members uh, in, the, in certain committees to move forward. We have a, a chemical abortion ban that we've been working towards introducing and getting uh, signed into law, hopefully passed and signed into law. In Oklahoma, we were able to deliver over 5,000 and petitions from Oklahoma constituents to key committee members to demand the passage of the life at conception uh, bill there. Um, so we were also in Florida. Students showed up. There's been pro-abortion, pro-abortion forces showing up in Tallahassee, uh, arguing and screaming and trying to stop the hearings against the 15-week bill. Uh, students for Life uh, and the Pro-Life Gen showed up to support the 15-week bill, even though we would prefer the heartbeat bill. We still showed up to support that bill and advocate for its passage because we know it will save um, some lives. Um, so it, it, it is, um, there's a lot we can do and there's a lot going on right now. I hope you're paying attention. You're following Students for Life Action, our Facebook, our Instagram, our Twitter. That will give you up-to-date kind of information that's happening in your state. We've got a 50-state strategy we're deploying uh, with lobbyists and grassroots activists to prepare for uh, the post-Row America and to move forward legislation that's going to help fill in this map of states that have protected the pre-born when Roe is reversed. So don't forget to go to studentsforlifeaction.org check it out or studentsforlife.org. Uh, you'll see that map on the blog or follow us on social media. You'll see it. Um, it's, it's incredible. Memorize it, get ready and get to your state house.